This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Aaron Maté. In a major victory for human rights activists, a Guatemalan court has returned a guilty verdict in the Spanish embassy massacre of 1980. On Monday, the court found former police chief Pedro Garcia Arredondo responsible for ordering an attack on 37 peasant activists and student organizers who were occupying the Spanish embassy in Guatemala City to protest the government. Judge Maria Eugenia Castellanos delivered the verdict. This court unanimously declares, first, that the defendant, Pedro Garcia Arredondo, is the perpetrator responsible for the crimes of murder. According to Monday's ruling, Arredondo was the officer who gave the order to set fire to the diplomatic mission, burning the activists to death. He was also found guilty of two separate murders and sentenced to a total of 90 years in prison. One of the victims of the Spanish embassy massacre was Don Vicente Menchú an indigenous peasant leader and father of Nobel Peace Prize winner Rigoberto Menchu. In a moment, Rigoberto Menchu will join us live from Guatemala City to discuss this historic verdict, over three decades in the making. But first, let's go back to a clip of the 1983 documentary, When the Mountains Tremble. In the film, Menchu looks directly into the camera and explains why her father and other peasant activists occupied the Spanish embassy January 31, 1980. The security forces arrived in our village to throw us off our plot. According to them, it belonged to a nearby landowner. We were very scared, since we didn't speak Spanish and couldn't understand them. They destroyed what little we had. So the people started defending themselves. But no one would listen to us, neither the government nor the mass media. That's why my father got together with many others in the capital, and they decided to take over the Spanish embassy, to let the world know what was happening to us. The rest is history. That was Rigoberto Menchu in the 1983 documentary, When the Mountains Tremble. Just two people survived the embassy fire. One of them was Spanish Ambassador Maximo Cajal y López. The other was a Guatemalan farmer named Gregorio Yuha. He was uh, subsequently disappeared, and his body found with evidence of torture three days after the fire. During the Guatemalan Dirty War, more than 200,000 people died. Eighty-three percent of them were indigenous Mayans. Well, for more, we're joined now by Democracy Now! video stream from Guatemala City by Rigoberta Menchu. She was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1992. She's published many books, including I, Rigoberta Menchu, an Indian woman in Guatemala. She's been translated into over a dozen languages, awarded more than 30 honorary degrees, runs the Rigoberta Menchu Tum Foundation. Here in New York, we're joined by Pamela Yates, a partner at Skylight Pictures, a documentary film and digital media company that focuses on human rights and social justice stories. In 1983, she collaborated with Rigoberta Menchu in that documentary, When the Mountains Tremble. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Let's go directly first to Guatemala City. Rigoberta Menchu, you were in the courtroom when the verdict and sentence were handed down. Can you describe your reaction? Uh, Rigoberta Menchu, usted podría uh, contarnos su reacción cuando escuchó el fallo en la corte, por favor. Bueno, es una... Es un hecho histórico, es algo muy grande. Es algo que esperamos por 16 años. El juicio llevó 16 años. En la vida jurídica del proceso llevó 16 años y fueron 35 años que ocurrieron los hechos. Pues es emocionante. Es, es de verdad algo muy especial en la vida. Well, undoubtedly, this is a historic event. This trial and verdict are huge. We waited 16 years for this verdict to be handed down. The trial went on for 16 years, and uh, this verdict has been issued 36 years after the event itself. So we are deeply moved, and this is a very special moment in our history. 
Can you talk about your long quest for justice, uh, almost four decades in the making? Podría contarnos algo de su búsqueda por la justicia que ha durado tantos decenios. En primer lugar, yo salí de Guatemala en un exilio forzoso. Desde que salí al exilio, yo prometí eh, a mi padre, prometí a, a la memoria de Guatemala que lucharía contra la impunidad. Y es lo que he hecho precisamente. Durante año con año, día con día, eh, me dediqué a juntar el expediente, a reservar las evidencias y a armar todo eh, la verdad de la gente. Well, first of all, I left Guatemala uh, fl and fled. I was forced into exile, and I promised myself, and I promised my father, and I promised the memory of Guatemala and the victims of Guatemala that I would not um, cease fighting for against impunity. And that's precisely what I have done. Uh, year in and year out, uh, every day of my life, I have dedicated myself to gathering uh, the evidence and putting together the cases uh, to uh, fight for this truth. Yo creo que lo más importante es uh, la memoria del, de las víctimas, es la verdad. Teníamos que acreditar la verdad. Y primero la verdad, porque nos han dicho mentirosos, eh, han denigrado la memoria de las víctimas, han dicho que se han autoinmolado, y ahora queda en el tribunal muy claro la responsabilidad tanto de García Redondo, pero también del Estado. Hay una responsabilidad del Estado en esta masacre. I, I think that it's very important, and what's really crucial here is the memory of the victims and the uh, search for the truth, and also the commitment to substantiate the truth. So the truth is foremost. Uh, because they accused us of being liars, they tried to denigrate the memory of the victims. They even said that the victims had burned themselves. Uh, but. The truth has uh, come forward with this verdict from the court that holds not just um, Garcia uh, Arondo responsible, but holds the state of Guatemala responsible for this massacre. Let's go to that issue of the state, because in the same courthouse, uh, General Rios Montt um, is on trial, though that trial has been delayed. Can you talk about the significance of what he has done? Uh, muy bien. Podría comentar entonces justamente sobre la responsabilidad del Estado. Tenemos entendido que en uh, el, el mismo edificio de la Corte está aún en proceso eh, pues el juicio contra Ríos Montt. ¿Usted podría comentar sobre el significado de esos dos procesos, por favor? Sí. Yo creo que ahora hay dos sentencias. La sentencia de la masacre de la Embajada de España, que ustedes oyeron ayer, pero también hay una sentencia condenatoria al general Ríos Montt. Eh, ambos casos todavía tienen muchas dificultades, tienen muchos procesos. En el caso de Ríos Montt, eh, la Corte de Constitucionalidad cometió una ilegalidad. Eh, la discusión que hay actualmente no es legal. Eh, rompió todos los procesos que tenía que cursar y por eso pues hay una dificultad jurídica. Eh, todo lo que quieren es impedir que haya eh, que la sentencia quede en firme. 
Um, yes, there are two uh, guilty verdicts uh, that have been issued in this courthouse. First, uh, the guilty verdict for the Spanish Embassy massacre, and secondly, the guilty conviction of Rios Montt. In both cases, um, we're seeing that there are significant legal challenges. Uh, the Constitutional Court has um, co declared the uh, case against Rios Montt uh, uh, as um, not uh, has been annulled, but uh, these are, are illegal arguments. Uh, they are breaking with le due process, and so uh, both cases face significant uh, legal challenges and hurdles to stick. Pam Yates, if you could tell us further about what's happening with Rios Montt right now, the man who was president from '82 to '83, what he was convicted of, why he's back in trial, and. As we wrap up, uh, how this implicates, or does it, the current president of Guatemala, uh, Perez Molina, and the role of the United States? That's a lot, Amy. And buenos dias, Rigoberta. Um, the case against Rios Montt, uh, he is being retried on the same charges of genocide and crimes against humanity. But his lawyer's strategy is to delay and deny, delay so that he will never go to prison. He's 88 years old. They hope he will die before that. But it is, isn't it incredible that the people of Guatemala now have successfully adjudicated these two cases, one for genocide, the first ever of a perpetrator of genocide against indigenous people in the Americas. Never happened before. That was Rios Montt. That was Rios Montt. And now the, the, tri the verdict set aside? The verdict was set aside, but for so many people in Guatemala, the verdict is valid. And you know, the quest for justice is justice. So the fact that people came into the courtroom and spoke for two months about what had actually happened in Guatemala in both the Rios Montt genocide case and the Pedro Garcia Arredondo case, the burning of the Spanish embassy, really contributed to the historical narrative and setting the record straight about what happened in Guatemala so everyone knows what actually happened and no one is afraid to talk about it. And the U.S. role? The U.S. role, well, the U.S. was totally complicit in the genocide in Guatemala. And um, we now have the documentation to prove it. When Rios Montt was being tried for genocide, the Ministerio Público, the public ministry, like the Attorney General's office, had a very narrow focus on one particular region and one particular group of ethnic Maya, the Maya Ishil. But many other things were happening, and many other areas really need to be explored. The role of Otto Pérez Molina, the current president of Guatemala, the role of the United States. And I'm hoping now that the conviction in the Spanish embassy case will increase the momentum for this justice initiative to continue. More people have been tried, arrested, convicted of crimes that happened during the war in Guatemala in the last four years than in the previous 30 years. And I think the international community has to support that initiative. Rigoberta Menchu, as we wrap up, do you hold the United States responsible, in addition to your own government at the time, the Guatemalan government and military? Uh, Rigoberta, en conclusión, ¿usted considera que el gobierno de los Estados Unidos tiene alguna responsabilidad por esos acontecimientos, además, uh, así como el gobierno de Guatemala en aquel entonces? We only have 15 seconds. Solamente tenemos 15 segundos. Sí, totalmente. Eh, hay mucha documentación de la Guerra Fría, hay mucha documentación de la participación, incluso el arma que se usó en la Embajada de España para quemar esa embajada, pues realmente es de dudosa procedencia. Eh, vamos a continuar documentando. Eh, hay una responsabilidad del Estado y hay una responsabilidad de Estados Unidos. Yes, uh, I, I totally concur. There is a great deal of documentation that has been compiled, uh, part of it related to the Cold War. And, and in fact, the uh, weapon that was used to incinerate the Spanish embassy uh, and, and to burn those that occupied it uh, is also of a dubious source uh, that is being looked into and documented. So in conclusion,